welcome. Welcome to our new series, Blessed, as Steve said on the video. He's at our city campus, by the way. He says hello, sends his love. Uh, he's at our city campus. But as he mentioned in the video, we're starting a new series called Blessed. And we're going on a journey as a church, looking at, uh, for the next eight weeks, looking at what's called the Beatitudes. It's the first sermon that Jesus preached, known as the Sermon on the Mount. And what it does is it goes through, um, it, Jesus talks about blessing. A blessing that gives us powerful countercultural values that are vastly different from what this world that we live in says about being blessed. Many of the things that Jesus mentions in the Beatitudes, the world would say, um, I'm not so sure you call that a blessing. Uh, well, when we think of blessing, we often think of abundance, don't we? We think of wealth, we think of success, we think of uh, of, of, of wealth and abundance. But according to God's kingdom, according to the Beatitudes, real blessing actually looks quite different to that. And my prayer is as a church, our prayer over the next eight weeks is that we would align ourselves with what God's word says. We would align ourselves with these principles that Christ teaches us and that we would discover what it truly means to be living a blessed life. Let's take a look at those Beatitudes in Matthew 5. We're starting at verse one where it says this. It says, seeing the crowds, he went up to the mountain and when he sat down, his disciples came to him and he opened his mouth and he taught them saying, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are, the, are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are those who are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Today, we're gonna to look at the very first one of these statements that Jesus makes. When he says, blessed, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's a very odd opening line, I think, for his very first sermon that he preaches. It's an odd opening line. Blessed are the poor in spirit. And it's a very different concept and it's difficult for us to understand this concept of poverty and blessing. All in one sentence, all in one phrase, it seems a little contradictory because I guarantee you that if one of your friends came over for a cup of tea and said, listen, I've just lost everything. I've lost everything. I've lost my home. I've lost my job. I've lost all my possessions. I've lost absolutely everything. I pretty much guarantee you that you would not sit there and say, oh, you're so blessed. You would not reply by saying, wow, what a blessing. What a blessing. And yet, that's Jesus' opening line. Blessed are the poor in spirit and the inheritance of those who are is the kingdom of heaven. So the question for us today has to be, what does it mean? What does it mean to be poor in spirit? Well, let's unpack it for a bit. To be poor in spirit is to acknowledge and realize our own lack and our own deficiency. It's this realization that on my own, in my own effort, I am utterly spiritually bankrupt before God. I have nothing. I have nothing to offer a holy and righteous God. In fact, spiritually speaking, I am completely sinful. I am lost. I am ultimately in need of a Savior. It's an acknowledgement of our need for God. Interestingly, from the very first line in Jesus' very first sermon, he points us directly back to himself. Isn't that a powerful thought? And another way to understand what it means to be poor in spirit is actually to look at the opposite of what that means. And the opposite of being poor in spirit is to be proud in spirit. One scholar puts it like this. He says, the man who believes he does not need God 
is proud of spirit. He is not blessed by God, nor is he part of God's kingdom. See, it's this humility of spirit. It's this, and, and being poor in spirit, having a humility of spirit is not a negative thing, as would our natural worldly tendency to think. No, in fact, it is phenomenally powerful. It is incredibly positive because the Bible says that to be poor in spirit is to have a blessed life, is to inherit the kingdom of God. And if we are going to be poor in spirit, then we need to understand two things. Or another way of saying it is if if we are poor in spirit, then we definitely understand these two things. Here it is. The first thing is this. We understand, the poor in spirit understand that everything I have is from God. Everything I have is from God. As a family, we, every sort of other Friday or whatever, we try and have a family movie night. That's if we can just like all agree on what movie to watch and we don't spend an hour scrolling through uh, Netflix trying to decide and then end up going, oh, never mind, it's too late now anyway. But on a good night when we can all agree, we have a family movie night. And to make it a little bit more special, because how special was going to the video shop and choosing the movie and then choosing the candy? There's just none of that anymore. I mean, you, you young people who've never known a video store, you just don't know what it's like to live a blessed life. <laughs> but to make it a little bit more special, we all go to the supermarket and we let the kids choose, like we all choose one or two treats to have with the movie. It's all part of the, the thing, you know, it's all part of the experience, the evening. So we did this like literally like two, two Friday nights ago. We, we'd chosen the movie, we all agreed. We went to the supermarket, we chose all our treats and then we come back home, the movie's on, we're all sitting, the treats are out, we're all enjoying this movie. And out of the corner of my eye, I see Steve reach over into the sweet bag that Judah has on his lap. And then I watch as Judah knocks his hand away and says, nah, they're mine. (laughs) And and I, I could see the confusion on Steve's face as he began to explain to our dear, dear child that those sweets that he was eating And that popcorn that he was enjoying and that drink that he was finding so refreshing and that couch that he was sitting on and that TV that he was watching and that life that he was living was earned, paid for and supplied out of the pocket of his father. And that we gave it to him, we could take it away at any moment. And all the parents in the room said... Amen. (laughs) You know, the person who is poor in spirit realizes that everything I have is from God. The very breath in my lungs is from God. In um, traditional Jewish prayer, uh, a morning prayer, a a traditional Jewish morning prayer begins like this. It says, thank you, God, for the rest that you have given me through the night and for the breath that renews my body and spirit. And I thought, what an amazing prayer to begin a morning with, to say, thank you, Lord, for the rest that you've given my body, but also as a reminder to myself that everything I have is from Him, to say thank you every morning for the very breath in my lungs, for the new day that you have given me, Lord. See, my ability to work my family, my job, my home, the roof over my head and the food in my belly, the very life that is in me, the very breath I get to breathe every morning, the very sun that rises before me is given to me because God chooses to give it to me, but by the grace of God. You know, I've seen it, and you've probably seen it too, I've seen it in so many places, the phrase used, self-made. You know, people say, I'm a self-made man, or I'm a self-made woman, and it always makes me wonder if they would still claim to be self-made if they realize that the very body they stand in and, and the, very, the, very, the very body that they stand in is God's creation and the very breath that's in their lungs that allows them to breathe and say those words is 
the very breath of God and the very mind that they have used to create and innovate and mastermind was first created by a mastermind God. See, it doesn't matter if you are brand new to faith. It doesn't matter if you have got a spiritual inheritance of 10 generations of Christians behind you. It doesn't matter if you've been walking for Jesus for 90 years or if you came to faith two minutes ago, every single one of us is the same, but by the grace of God go I. Everything I have is from God. Everything I have is from God. And perhaps we can make this our prayer today. As we seek after a humble spirit, we can say, God, thank you for the life that you have given me. I acknowledge that everything I have and everything I am is from you. For I am poor in spirit. The second thing that those who are poor in spirit realize is this. I can't save myself. I can't save myself. At the beginning of every year, our staff team, I, I think I've told you the story before, it might be familiar to you. Every, at the beginning of every year, our staff team have a team building day. And on team building day, we break into teams and we compete against each other. And I have to tell you, it gets fierce. There are some very competitive people running this church salvations are on the line on team building day. It's questionable. Some of the salvations are questionable. Uh, I'm just kidding. We're all good. Uh, one of the games we played one year was Zorb Soccer. Have you played Zorb Soccer before? You know those giant see-through inflatable balls, and I mean like gigantic balls, and you get strapped inside of it, and then you have to run along in this giant ball and kick the ball to your goal without being tackled by the other team. And so I'm strapped into this Zorb ball, and my team is standing along our goal line getting ready to face off the opposition. And now my team... Uh, kind, they're all sort of similar size to me, so and I'm, you know, not a, I tend to think I'm not like a, 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 a big person, I'm not very tall, and, you know, we're all about the same size. I look across to the people fa uh, that we're facing off, and, and well, let's just say they're, they're a lot larger than we are, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, like I'm just feeling very intimidated right now, but listen, it didn't put us off. It didn't deter us. We are full of zeal. We are confident in our abilities. And we are lined up there ready to take on the challenge. And the whistle blows and off we go. We get a few kicks in toward our goal, but it's not long before they start knocking us off one by one by one. And during the game, it's only a few minutes in. I'm pretty sure I didn't even touch the ball at this point. I get absolutely knocked off my feet. Like I got smashed from behind. I flew. And when I say I went flying, I mean feet off the floor, a few feet in the air, flying through the sky, flying. And I land on my back like a turtle <laughs> on the back of my shell. And I'm like waving my arms around and I cannot get up for the life of me. I can't get myself back up onto my feet. And I am lying there like a turtle going, help, somebody help me. I'm like looking over to the sideline to the people standing on the sideline who are just standing there laughing at me, by the way. Help me, somebody help me. I just, there was just no way that I was gonna get up on my own. I am proper stuck. I'm crying out for help because I realize that although I am a grown woman, Married with kids, the house, the dog, the degree. I'm still stuck. I can't get up. I cannot save myself. And friends, to be poor in spirit is to realize that even though you might look like you have it all together, even though you might look like you know what, I, what you are doing, even though you might have the house, the dog, the white picket fence, you can't save yourself. News flash, we have all sinned. We have all fallen short of God's standard and there is nothing I can do online. There is nothing you can do to fix that on your own. I can't enter the kingdom of heaven on my own merits. I have nothing to offer an almighty God. I have nothing to offer a holy God. Can I tell you today that your good works won't do it? Mm -mm. You, your good works cannot save you. Religious service 
won't, being on the dream team won't even save you. Religious giving won't save you. Family heritage won't save you. Trying to balance the scales won't save you. Like, oh, I've done some bad things, but I've done way more good things. No, that won't save you. Being better than most won't save you. Like, I mean, I've, I've done bad, but not as bad as Dean. Like, that won't even save you. Sorry, Dean. If you want the kingdom of heaven, both now and in eternity, its entry point is to realize that I am poor in spirit. I am poor in spirit. And I don't need myself. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need a savior. Blessed are the poor in spirit. I'm gonna ask the band to come and join me now. Maybe we could make this our prayer. God, I thank you for Jesus. I acknowledge that I can't save myself. So today, I trust in your saving grace for I am poor in spirit. I am poor in spirit. Here's the blessing of being poor in spirit. Those who are poor in spirit receive grace. Ephesians 2 verse eight says, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It's a gift, a gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may boast. If you are poor in spirit, you receive forgiveness. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When you are poor in spirit, you receive supernatural supply. And my God shall supply all the, your needs of yours according to His riches and glory in Jesus Christ, Philippines 4. Uh, you, when you are poor in spirit, you receive anointing. 1 John chapter 2 says, but you have been anointed by the Holy One and you, ha and all, and, and you have all knowledge. When you are poor in spirit, you receive favour, just as it says in Psalm 90 where it says, let the favour of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. When you are poor in spirit, you receive purpose. In Romans 8, it says, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. And finally, when you are poor in spirit, you receive eternal life. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And we're gonna do something right now we're gonna take some time now to actually just reset our posture. To reset our posture into a, a, a humility of spirit posture. We're gonna have a spirit reset. And, and, and to acknowledge, to acknowledge that everything I have comes from God. I'm gonna give you a moment to acknowledge that. And I'm gonna give you a, knowledge, a, a moment to acknowledge that I can't do it on my own, I need a saviour. I need a saviour. And we're gonna receive communion together. And as you walked through the doors um, this morning, you will have received one of these little cups. And in just a moment, we're gonna worship together. And if you missed this, then there's a team just down the back. You can just go and see one of them just as we worship. Don't move now, but when we stand to our feet, you could do that if you missed it. You know, when Jesus gathered uh, with His disciples, in what is now known as the Last Supper. It was the last meal they had together before He went to the cross. He did something. And it's something that we as Christians now repeat many, many times. What He did was using bread and wine, and we use juice and wafers. <laughs> using bread and wine, He gave them a picture or He used these as symbols to represent what He was about to do on the cross. He picked up the bread, He broke it. He said, this is my body broken. This is what's gonna happen to my body and it's broken and it's broken for you. And then He picked up the wine and He poured it out. He said, this is my blood poured out and, and I'm gonna pour it out for you. 
And here today, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna invite you in just a moment to join me in standing to our feet. This is a moment where not only can we remember what He did, but we can acknowledge our need for Him. And as we're talking today about being poor in spirit, I can't think of a better way to acknowledge that I am nothing but a sinner in need of a Saviour, than to use those symbols once again to remind ourselves of exactly what Christ did on the cross. So would you join me in standing to your feet right now? Just stand to your feet. If you're visiting with us here today, please don't feel any pressure to participate. You are more than welcome to, but we don't want you to feel pressured in any way. You can just watch on and just be part of our experience together. But what I'm gonna do is we're gonna worship. We're gonna sing grace to grace. We're gonna worship together. And as we worship, why don't you make those two prayers your prayers today? Why don't you say, Lord, I thank you. And I acknowledge right now that everything I have is from you. For I am poor in spirit. And then why don't you Thank Him for the gift of the cross and acknowledge your need for a Saviour. I can't, I can't save myself, Lord. I need you, Jesus. And as we worship, take your time to pray those two prayers. And then in your own time, you can eat and drink the communion together. And then I'll come back at the end and I'll pray for us. Thank you, team.
freedom When I see that grave I'll see Jesus From death to life I will sing a praise And the wonder of your grace When I see that cross I see freedom When I see that grave I see Jesus From death to life I will sing a praise moment right now, we acknowledge our need for You. Lord, everything we have is from You. And we acknowledge, God, that without You, we are nothing. We are utterly bankrupt. And Lord, I thank You for Your promise of blessing when we realise our need for You. God, thank You that our dependency on You means means experiencing the all of You. Thank You for Jesus. Thank You for Your forgiveness. Thank You for the cross. And thank You that it is available for every single one of us. Right now in this moment, I just wanna take a minute. If you wouldn't mind just still standing with me now. And I wanna say to you in this place, if you are here today, and you do not know Jesus, if you have not accepted Him, acknowledged Him as your Lord and Saviour right now, I wanna lead you in a prayer. If you're saying, Bex, I am far from God right now, but I know that I need Him in my life, then I'm gonna invite you to pray this prayer with me. I'm gonna invite every single person in this room. You pray it in your heart. You make it your own prayer. Every person watching online, you really mean it. Are you ready? Will you pray with me today? We say, dear Jesus, thank You that You went to the cross for me. Thank You that You paid the debt that I was due 
for my sin. I acknowledge that I need you today. I repent from my sin. I turn to you now. And I thank you for the new life that you have given me today. I wanna start a brand new life with you. Thank you that you have plans and purposes for me and that your word says that I can inherit the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' name, with every head still bowed and every eye closed, if you are saying, Bex, can you count me in on that prayer? I prayed it. Maybe it was the first time, maybe it wasn't. Maybe you prayed it a long time ago, but you know right now you've been living far from God and you're saying, Bex, I'm giving my life right with God today. I'm gonna count to three and on the count of three, I'd love to see a show of hands. I'm not gonna embarrass you. I'm not gonna call you to the front, but I would just love to know who I prayed for today. If you're saying, Bex, count me in on that prayer. If that's you, one, two, three. Three, you can lift your hand right now. You're saying, Bex, count me in on that prayer online. You can do the same. Awesome, up on the mezzanine, I see you. Anybody else, you're saying, Bex, can you count me in on that prayer? Yes, thank you. Awesome, yeah, I see you. Yes, I see you over here to my left. Thank you, Lord. Down here on my right, yeah, I see you. Yes, thank you. I see you. Anybody else? Online, there's a button you can push. It says, I raise my hand. You're saying, count me in on that prayer. I wanna get my life right with God today. Awesome. Thank you, God. Oh, God, we thank you for every person who prayed that prayer. God, I thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that they are blessed. But Lord, I thank you, God, for the life that you have given them. God, for the plans that you have for them. And God, I pray that you would draw people around them to help them on their journey that they have started today. God, I pray your blessing over them, your favour over them right now. May you protect them, oh Jesus. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Come on, church, would you give our God some praise today?